Ever since it first came onto air in 1989, The Simpsons set itself apart from other family animated shows due to its social commentary on American life. Get me Steven Spielberg. He's unavailable. Then get me his non-union Mexican equivalent. Over the years, it inspired what were criticized as a series of copycat animated shows, mostly made by Seth MacFarlane. But who could blame anyone for wanting to emulate such a high quality show? The Simpsons was constantly talked about as a reflection of the average American town, with real life problems and a sort of irreverence to consumerist culture and celebrity. You suck, McBain! <laughs> Other show creators and writers' rooms developed a frustration with The Simpsons' cultural dominance and storytelling prowess. Simpsons did it! Simpsons did it! But over three decades, the viewership and quality of the show began to decline. Its sixth season, in 1995, was arguably one of the best seasons of television ever made. With episodes like Sideshow Bob Roberts, Treehouse of Horror 5, Grandpa vs. Sexual Inadequacy, Homer the Great, A Star is Burns, and Who Shot Mr. Burns, to name just a few. The season averaged 17 million viewers per episode, and was a critical darling. But 25 years later, The Simpsons now averages around 2.5 million viewers per episode, which is an 85% drop. There could be many reasons for this, including viewers having too many options nowadays, between streaming services and arrogant YouTube videos about 90s TV series that people used to watch. But The Simpsons is rarely ever talked about these days. Well, not for its actual comedy or storylines, more so just business decisions that its empire happens to be making. So why the decline? I decided to watch and compare two episodes from season 6, Homer the Great and A Star is Burns, to the first episode of series 31, The Winter of Our Monetized Content, and the first episode of series 32, Undercover Burns. The first difference I noticed right away was the pacing. In 1995, the show had a more unraveling pace, whereas recently, the writers seem scared to lose the audience's attention, almost like they're aware that they're competing with your phone. Whether it be sound effects, the poisonings, but a worse person, considering how many have died, or just radical switches in tone and comedy style, making the show a bit more like Family Guy. There's no real rhythm or meaning to its comedy anymore. In 1995, the writers used to give the audience more time to breathe with the characters, and that let the joke develop throughout the episode. For example, in the opening of Homer the Great, we spend the first two and a half minutes with Homer gradually being frustrated with his daily life, and then recognizing that Lenny and Carl appear to have some sort of secret that is making their lives better. Whenever Homer asks them why this is happening, the characters always repeat, It's a secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. Almost in a rhythm. This rhythm happens again later at the dinner table, when Grandpa tries to explain to Homer that he's a member of the secret society. I'm a member! I'm a stonecutter! I'm a member! This makes the humor stem from the character dynamics. Whereas in season 32, the first two and a half minutes are spent with Mr. Burns' Take Your Kid to Work Day, with a series of little gag moments with loosely connected characters in Springfield. I just got cast as Krusty's kid at a custody hearing. Possible recurring. Later, loser. Then suddenly, it takes a turn, and Mr. Burns is kidnapping all the kids to send them to work in the power plant, which is a rather extreme setup that will surely result in conflict. But as it turns out, that storyline ends right there, and instead we just follow Mr. Burns to the bathroom, where he discovers some employees of his have written something nasty about him on the bathroom wall. <sighs> This makes the entire opening scene irrelevant to the rest of the story, and there's no rhythm or consistency to the tone of comedy. The new writers also seem to understand the gags that the 1995 Simpsons writers hit, but they remove the meaning of the jokes, which is what makes them so funny. For example, in season 6's A Star Is Burns, Homer watches a short film called Man Getting Hit by a Football, and laughs hysterically in front of a mute audience. <coughs> In season 31, Homer watches a viral video of a monkey sniffing his finger and falling out of a tree. Oh, 
I've never seen. <laughs> On the face of it, the joke is the same. Homer watches a stupid video and laughs a lot because he is stupid. But there's a reason why the joke doesn't land as hard 25 years later. Meaning. In season 6, it's an integral part of the story. Marge sets up a short film competition to prove that Springfield is sophisticated after the town receives bad press coverage. She then hires five judges, half of which become corrupted by Mr. Burns, who wants his self-promotional film to win, whereas Marge and the film critic want the most artistic film to win. This means that it all comes down to Homer. The stakes could not be higher, as the town's reputation is on the line and it's at risk of being corrupted. Yet Homer cannot resist his own impulses, and continues to gravitate towards the film that resonates with him the most. Well, Homer, it all comes down to you. Football in the groin! Football in the groin! This makes the joke far funnier, because the consequence of the joke means so much to the other characters involved. But 25 years later, in season 31, Homer tries to make an online show to prove that he knows about sports. Instead, he ends up accidentally going viral for fighting Bart on camera. A random content expert then enters the episode and shows him a series of clips that went viral, and Homer happens to find it this funny. <laughs> then boom! <laughs> There's no stakes in that. There's no meaning in that. The gag is that Homer laughs all night, meaning that the joke itself isn't funny on the face of it. But if we drag it out for long enough, then the time expended on it will in itself make it funny. The latter resembles Family Guy's time-wasting gags like this. Ah. Ah. Far more than its preceding episodes. The next key decline I noticed was character motivation. If we look at how stories used to be structured, it was far more about the family, their relatable problems and insecurities, and how that would then cause reactions in the episode that need to be resolved. For example, in season 6's Homer the Great, Homer is up late in bed talking with Marge, something that is immediately more relatable as he's reflecting on his own life, not just being an active character out causing trouble. He tells Marge about his insecurities from being excluded from the secret society, as it triggers memories of rejection from his childhood. Chess, no homers. We're allowed to have blood. This makes us understand why Homer is doing what he's doing, as there is a deeper need at the root of his behavior. Whereas in season 32, Mr. Burns decides to go undercover to earn the adoration of his staff after he hears they hate him. Why? because he saw they wrote something mean about him. That's it. This could be due to writer complacency, as the earlier seasons already wrote so much backstory on all of the characters that they now feel as if the characters are fully formed, so they can just throw them in any new situation without further explanation required. But this desire is not consistent to Mr. Burns' personality in any way. If he cared about what people thought about him, he would not be the way he is. But because it serves the concept for a neat little episode, it's used as his guiding motivation. And this is a key issue. Episodes are now conceptual, but not relatable. The episodes are more about executing a concept. Like, what if Mr. Burns were undercover, just like the hit reality TV show, Undercover Boss. Or they just want to tackle the idea of content creators. So they throw Homer and Bart into the mix as sort of celebrities touching on the topic. This makes the characters less relatable, as it has nothing to do with day-to-day -day human life at all, but more so a chance for a Simpsons does blank, where they could take any word or concept to fill up an episode slot. And the way they get there is ironically often derivative from the very shows that have been accused of copying The Simpsons in the past. Don't you ever, ever compare me to Family Guy. For example, in Family Guy's fourth season in 2006, Peter had his own TV segment called You know what really grinds my gears? And then in 2019, The Simpsons has Homer try to set up his own YouTube show, like this. Here's a few things that bug me. The show has also become more surreal, where the comedy used to be highly relatable and human, now it's more like Family Guy, in the sense that it has nothing to do with reality. Now I'm going back to my people. Hey, hey dog. All of this makes the show just feel like a series of back-to-back -back gags rather than a coherent storyline that stands on its own two feet. 
Its use of music has also changed drastically. The Simpsons used to create musical numbers that were catchy and well constructed. Who needs the quickie mark? Now here's the tricky part. Who rocks fish of their sight? Who rigged every Oscar night? But now it just throws on a soundtrack to blaze through a sequence. But it's not enriching, making the use of music pretty cheap and uncreative. It's almost like they know the song won't go viral, so what's the point in trying? What's most frustrating about the new episodes is that there are simply too many characters. The Simpsons has always had a huge number of characters living in Springfield, but these characters became developed in novel ways throughout the show. For example, when they host a short film festival, characters submit their own films, and that gives us new insights into them as people. Don't cry for me, I'm already dead. But now, we have the main family, but the other characters in the town are constantly popping up, competing for attention. And then on top of that, we have all these additional characters that just temporarily serve the story or the gag, but make us feel nothing. For example, in season 31, Homer and Bart go to a convention of other online influencers. For the foundation, we can either go with Brown. First, we take the burger box from the back, yeah carefully open the box. But these characters never recur even in the same episode, making them just soul gags with no purpose, similar to when Family Guy covered a similar topic. Here's one millennial who has a parakeet with nine million followers on Snapchat. Here's another who single-handedly started the hashtags that canceled 12 network TV shows. And this is what's so ironic. Creators like Seth MacFarlane were criticized for copying the formula of The Simpsons. But over time, as new writers replaced the 90s generation, they ran out of ideas and began emulating his comedy style. All culminating in 2017, when there was a crossover episode of Family Guy and The Simpsons. You know, when I first met you, I thought, hey, I love this guy. This is the funniest guy I've ever met. Which signified that Family Guy had perhaps made it to Simpsons level. But not because it can now compete with 1995's high quality writing, but perhaps because The Simpsons had declined so far that it was now below Family Guy's level and reached out for help. The Simpsons used to be so good that every show creator would struggle not to copy them. But nowadays, there's no need for anyone to copy The Simpsons anymore, because it's just a Frankenstein mix of other shows, masquerading under the brand name of what was once the best cartoon on television. I think I speak for all of us when I say, I am over The Simpsons. And that's why The Simpsons has declined so much. They used to be all about originality and commenting on consumer and celebrity culture. But now, they're a part of that same culture, with celebrity guests even appearing as themselves, not to be mocked, but promoted. The show is not continuing because it has anything to say, but simply to make money. And that's the sad reality. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. As 25 years later, The Simpsons has gone from being copied to copying others. This is a new channel, so don't forget to like and subscribe and tune in to the next video.